One of the most important aspects of fiber, fiber optic connect determination is selecting which epoxy to use. Select an epoxy that is specific to fiber optics. Typically speaking, most fiber optic epoxies are a two-part heat cure epoxy that are uh, generally pre-measured for precise mix ratio and convenience. Some of the variables are pot life, uh, cure schedule, and environmental characteristics. Uh, fiber Optic Center can help you uh, select the right epoxy for your application. So here we have um, a sample of what a typical presentation of epoxy would look like. This is called uh, what we call a bipack, and it's basically a 2.5 gram amount of epoxy uh, having two parts in the same envelope but separated by a plastic separator uh, so that uh, it maintains its shelf life and it's just ready for the operator to take out and uh, mix. So what we need to do is just separate this plastic separator in the middle and we wind up with one uh, envelope with one section that we can mix both sides of the epoxy in, part A and part B. You can get it started with your hands, just kind of pushing and making sure that you're getting all of the uh, liquid out of the corners of the, of the packet. And then what we can do that at that point is use a, a roller, specific for rolling out <coughs> Epoxy packs like this, you can get them through Fiber Optic Center. An alternative way to mix these would be uh, to use the edge of a table, going back and forth on the edge of the table, up and down. Or uh, a nice effective way to use the uh, mix the epoxy would be to use an automatic uh, dispenser that uh, will roll the epoxy through uh, a couple of uh, mixing belts uh, for a certain duration. So at this point, the epoxy is mixed, it's very uniform, we can see the color is very uniform, and this would be ready for dispensing into a syringe. So we're going to demonstrate how to load this pre the epoxy into the syringe or the applicator that you're going to be using to inject the epoxy into your connectors. This is a typical syringe uh, and a plunger. For manual operation of injection or injecting the epoxy into the connector, um, there's a similar syringe, uh, basically the same size that you would use uh, in a pneumatic style dispenser. The pneumatic uh, style dispenser is, is really good for repeatability and uh, just taking out some of the, uh, the possibility for operator error. We're going to take the syringe and put this cap on the end of it so that the epoxy does not run out the front as we're dispensing it. Um, just for convenience, I'm using this syringe holder to help me uh, keep the syringe stable as I guide the epoxy in. This is the pre-mixed bipack that we had earlier. Um, you can see it's got the two parts and you might be able to see that there are plenty of small air bubbles here and that is caused by uh, the mixing that I did, rolling the two parts together. Um, it's natural, uh, that nat naturally occurs uh, in a manual mixing process like that. It's not problematic at this point, um, but before we do inject our connectors with this epoxy, we are going to need to perform a degassing uh, process. And that could be either with a uh, centrifuge, which is the most popular, or some type of va vacuum. Snapping the separator back onto this envelope, and that kind of traps the uh, epoxy into one little section and allows us to dispense this a little easier into the syringe. I'm going to push the epoxy away from the corner and snip off one of the corners of that envelope. So carefully, I'm just going to align the opening of that corner syringe and just slowly push out that epoxy. Again, it might be more evident now that some of these air bubbles, or at least most of what's coming out of this envelope, the epoxy is 
filled with quite a bit of those small air bubbles. Um, one method or one, one option to avoid having to do this process uh, of pre-mixing and degassing the epoxy um, and loading it into the syringe would be to purchase these syringes already pre-mixed and frozen. We ship this to you already mixed, already degassed, and frozen on dry ice and shipped to you. And you would just remove it from the carton when you're ready to use. And within five minutes, uh, you're ready to dispense it to your connectors. However, this particular syringe that we're working with does need to be degassed. So to prepare it for that, I need to put a stopper cap on the back of this syringe. And then it is ready to be placed in a centrifuge.